Well, a new set of superstars gets their turn in the pool today in Budapest for match two of ISL 2020. Swimming reimagined indeed. These stars, they've got their eyes set on trying to lead their team to victory in our second match even includes the runner up, the London Roar from a season ago. Match two here from the Duna Arena in Budapest and we are so glad you have joined us for ISL 2020. Alongside three-time Olympic champion Roddy Gaines, I am Bernie Gunther with the London Roar a year ago, Roddy. They were within nine and a half points of being the ISL champions. Their head coach, Melanie Marshall, she's retooled their team. They're ready to go this year. Yeah, they will certainly be tough again this year, but it won't be easy. 25 Olympic medals, 10 of them gold represented with all four teams. But, Bernie, we have a ton of fresh faces, so you're going to see a lot of new champions, especially right out of the gate. Well, probably their biggest competition today comes from the Team Iron. And a year ago, Katinka Hosu, she was the only athlete in all the ISL to be a match MVP but not the Skins winner. Well, if Shoystrom yesterday is the best swimmer on the world for the women's side, the Iron Lady may be the best all-around swimmer, certainly has been the last eight years, three Olympic gold medals, 11 world championships, and still going strong at 31. Well, the question is who can stop Adam Peaty swimming breaststroke? Probably the fastest sprinter in the entire world. Best male sprint breaststroker in history, world record holder, Olympic gold medalist, but he could be tested here tonight. He'll swim the 50 in a rare event, the 200 breaststroke. It is going to be so much fun, and we get it kicked off with the women's 100-meter butterfly, our first event on the pool deck. Four new teams. We saw the Cali Condors get their win yesterday. They get four points. Again, that's how the ISL works. Four points for your team to get first place, down to only one point for finishing fourth. And there is Marie Waddle coming out of the pool deck. She is rated as the number five ISL swimmer overall. A finalist at the World Championships in 2019. Only relay wins, and that's the story today. We're going to see, as you mentioned, a lot of first-time ISL winners today. Yeah, six rookies alone, Bernie, in this race here. Waddle and Haley Black are the only swimmers returning from last year. It's our first of eight individual races, worth nine points to the winner. We'll have three relays today that are worth double points. And again, the London Roar all the way down to the stretch in Las Vegas a year ago, having a chance to be ISL champions, and they're hoping that Waddle will start them off with a win at just 23 years old. All right, match two underway here from Budapest. London Roar, Aqua Centurions, DC Triton, and Team Iron. And look at this start. Melanie Enrique in lane number five in the black cap, wasting no time jumping out first. And wow, her best time coming in is seventh, seated seventh time-wise, 57-7, and look at her go out. 25-9 on the way out, that's faster than anybody else. Waddle, ten, a tenth of a second behind, here she goes, trying to track down Enrique. She was the gold medal winning summer European short course championships a year ago, and Waddle has taken over the field here now in the final 50. Long on that turn right there, but it doesn't matter. She will win this going away. Waddle gets nine points for London Roar, getting them off to a good start. And look at the points already stolen away. The jackpot time rule in this event, 2.2 seconds. So any swimmer that is slower than that behind the winning touch, her points go to the winner. And that's a brand new rule for ISL 2020. And as opposed to nine points, London Roar as a team, they score 19 points. And, and that is just, again, so devastating for the other teams because you put yourself in a hole. And Waddle, the way she swam that race was brilliant. Didn't panic whatsoever when Enrique went out really fast. By the way, faded to seventh, 56.45. That is a great time right on her best at 55.9. There you see it, 15 points scored by Marie Waddle. West adds four more, so 
in totality, the London Roar, they score 19 points. Team Iron with only six points. And already, London with a 13 point advantage. Now it's time for the men's 100 meter butterfly, which features the fifth fastest all time in this event, Rowdy. And again, you're going to see a new champion. No Chad Laclo, no Tom Shields, no Caleb Dressel. We saw them yesterday. We're going to see them again during the season. So a chance for a new champ. And there's Marius Kush. He's for the London Roar. ISL eighth rated swimmer. European short course champion in this event. But out on the outside, Matteo Revolta. He was top three in this event three times a season ago. Fourth rated ISL swimmer in this event. He would love to get his first ever win. And they also added Sebastian Zabo, who last year was with Team Iron. He averaged 24 and a half points in all three of his matches. That's a big pickup for the Aqua Centurions. And don't forget about Nicholas Santos. Santos, world record holder in the 50 fly. You have three guys in this race alone that have been under 50 seconds. Kush, the fastest of them all, at 49 flat. And he did that last year in the ISL. Good start there by Kush. Santos was spectacular off that start, 0.62. Zabo was good at .62. Again, Santos is gonna have the speed. You know he's got great speed, obviously. The question is, can he hang on that second 50 when you know Kush is gonna start chasing him down? Well, Zabo's gonna be the early leader. The Aqua Centurions all match are gonna be in lane seven and eight. Iron in five and six, Roar in three and four, DC Triton in one and two, and Zabo still holding on to the lead, but look at how tight yeah, this is, Rowdy. I, I'm, I'm counting five guys at the 75 mark that could win this race. We haven't seen that much thus far. But it's Zabo going first, Revolta and Zabo trying to go one, two for the Aqua Centurions. Big time start for the Centurions. They go one, two, at least 16 points. And that is a huge win. I can't begin to tell you what a start that is for the Centurions. They looked a little thin on paper coming in, and this is exactly what you need to, to again, build that momentum. The start's so critical. A little lazy on the actual entry for Kush. He was great on the reaction time, not great on the entry itself. And then all of a sudden, look across that board. At the 75 meter mark, to your right, five swimmers in it. But the last 25, the guys on the right hand side, Revolta, Zabo, Zabo all the way to the right. Outside Smoker gets it done and the only guy to break 50 seconds, 49.93, 50.01, eight one hundredths of a second behind was his teammate. Well, the Aqua Centurions flying into second after they score big time points in that race. 17 points scored by the Aqua Centurions. Yet to win a race, currently third is Team Iron, the home team here in Budapest. But don't fear, the Iron Lady waiting backstage. The world record holder in the 200 backstroke about to get her first race of ISL 2020. Katika Hosu will swim the 200 backstroke when we come back to Budapest. All right, back in Budapest for ISL 2020 women's 200 meter backstroke, the Iron Lady getting set to make her 2020 debut. She was the first non-skins winner to be named MVP. And if you're new to ISL, the part that maybe you don't realize is how many points are on the line in the skins battle. And that's what made that swim a year ago in Budapest, or swims I should say, by Katika Hosu so special. She's gonna be out in lane number five three-time Olympic champion. She won the 100-meter backstroke, the 200 IM, and the 400 IM in Rio. Silver in this event in Rio 2016. And she's currently the world record holder. Is there anybody in the field that has a chance against her, Rowdy? Or you would think that Zervina 
right next to her. And lane number six could have a chance. She has the third fastest time in history, but hasn't gone that fast since 2016. But to be fair, Hosu hasn't gone her world record time since 2014. It's been a while since both of those swimmers have been that fast. You can see that she is rated number six in the ISL in this event. Nine wins a season ago. And she take it because Zavina is her teammate. She was silver medalist at the European Short Course Championships in this event in 2019. And those two would love to go one, two right here. Well, that would put them right back in the thick of things. Right now, they're tied for third with DC trying it. So they really need this to kind of give them a shot in the arm to get back into it. I, I really think Hosu being at home is going to feed off of that adrenaline. There's not a crowd here and there are no fans, obviously, but the adrenaline of swimming home, there is nothing like it. I mean, the, 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 the feeling you have in a home pool is unlike any other, and uh, it's like playing a Super Bowl at home, so to speak, and Hosu is kind of feeding off that for sure. London Roar, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, the current leader is eight points ahead of the Aqua Centurions. Team Iron right now sitting tied for third with only nine points, but that can change in a big way right here. But Tressant right now for the London Moor, she's the one that's pushing the pace. She was the European short course champion in the 50 and 100 backstroke, so you'd expect her to get out quick. Right, and, and that's bodes well for her later on in the meet when she swims the 50 a little bit later on this evening as well as 100. So she's in good shape here in this 200 right now. But you can just get a sense that Hosu just wants to try to make a difference. And in fact, it's Bill Quist in lane number two at the bottom of the pool in the red cap. Now on the left side of your screen, she looks like she has a chance to be the leader. And, 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 and Bernie, the shocker here, obviously, are the two swimmers out in front, Bill Quist and Toussaint. But even more of a shocker is the Iron Lady. You can barely see her to the left of your screen with that dark cap. She is sitting way back right now in fourth position, fifth position. Billquist's highest finish a year ago was in College Park, Maryland, where she finished second in this event. She's about to get her first ever ISL win and upset here on the 200 backstroke, 2.02.23. 2 wow. Unbelievable. That is exactly what the doctor ordered. Yes, ma'am. Amy Billquist. You know the kind of talent that she has in the 100, just like Tucson. They are going to have a great battle in the 100 and the 50 for that matter, but boy, the 200, Bilquis has come through. Former Cal Bear, and look at her to the left, but way in the middle, in the very back, first, second, third, fourth, fifth place. Shocker, Katika Hosu, 206.8. That is seven seconds off her best time. Well, DT, DC Triton with 12 points in that battle. And again, this is all about the team points. DC Triton, 12 points. London Roar with 12 points. Team Iron with 10 points. And then you see that they've added to the total now. London Roar in the lead with 42 points after Amy Bilquist gets her first ISO win. She's down on the pool deck with Mark Foster. Yeah, but a big pickup for DC Tryon. Mm. You saw Amy Bilquist rated as the number 60 overall swimmer. You can see the ISL ratings at the bottom of the screen where these athletes stand up as far as the competition is concerned. And our next event on the pool deck, men's 
200 meter backstroke. We had one of eight new ISL records set in this event in match number one. Radoslav Kavicki went 148.51. Can Christian Diner get close to that? He was second three times in this event a year ago, and he's going to go up against Jacob Pebbly. DC trying a chance to try to get back-to-back -back wins. Well, Pebbly's been 148.9 before. Great swimmer. He and Ryan Murphy have been just so dominant over the last five or six years in the 200 backstroke. He's become such a good 100 backstroker. Certainly the 200 is his best event. Bronze in the 2017 World Championships, fifth at the Olympic Games in this event. But, you know, the, it's sort of like the first day with those first four teams. Bernie, we're just not knowledgeable on where everybody sits. And the, and the biggest proof to that was Katinka Hosu. I mean, who would have guessed she would have gone 206? I mean, I bet you she's done that 100 times in practice off a push-off. So that's, that's the big shocker. And so everything's going to start to play out here the first half of today, and then we'll really ramp it up tomorrow and get a, get a much better viewpoint of who's going to be swimming fast. Well, 1-2 early on. Diner Greenback for the London Roar and Leonardo Dedeos out in lane number eight, currently third. Again, all these athletes, Rowdy, trying to find different ways to train with a pandemic worldwide. It's affecting swimmers everywhere across the planet. And that's what I try to tell so many swimmers is the fact that you're not alone. This is, you're not on an island. Everybody in the whole world has been affected in many, many similar ways. And, and that, that might just have happened. We'll find out a lot more about Katika Hosu and what kind of shape she really is in. But for the men, this is sort of like the men's hunter fly right now with 50 meters left to go. Look at those three swimmers right there in lanes two, three, and four. The top three swimmers, look at how tight they are. One-tenth of a second separating first from third. Diner, Pebbly, and Greenback in that order. And now you see Diner, who was third three times a season ago, trying to get his first ISL win. He came in as the only top ten rated swimmer in this event. Oh, he's taken over the race, the final 50. Diner gets the win. Pebbly goes second for the London Roar, though they go 1-3 in the event. At least 15 points. Christian Diner getting another win for the London Roar. The question is, can Adam Peaty get a win? We're going to see him swim the 200 breaststroke on the other side. London Roar in the lead early on. But we are moments away from Adam Peaty getting an opportunity to swim the 200 breaststroke. But first, we have the women's 200 breaststroke. And this event features two out of the top three rated breaststrokers. Big pickup in the offseason. Annie Laser, she's going to be in lane number four right next to her. Her teammate, Sydney Pickram, who was a finalist at the Olympic Games in the 200 IM. And those two likely the ones to push the pace but you can't count out the aqua centurions in this event because they were dominant a season ago it seemed like they were almost breaststroke specialist if you will in season one yeah pickram and laser have both done it long course and short course laser the world short course champion in 2018 as you see the aqua centurions walk out she also won the pan am gold in this event as well as the hundred really just a just a second behind Le uh, Lily King. American breaststrokers are so good here. Pickram, though, is going to be very, very tough as well. She won the silver at the Pampax in the 200 IM. 77 and a half points scored by Annie Laser. And ISL season one, you saw that she comes in as the number two rated breaststroker in this event. Gallet in lane number one, she's eighth rated. 
Carraro in lane number seven. She's ninth rated. Watch Gallet. I, I, I love the way she looked. Silver medalist at the 2017 World Championships. She's been on this kind of stage before without question. And how difficult, Roddy, is it with all that's gone on in the world for the athletes to be prepared for a 200? Not taking anything away from the 50 and the 100 swimmers, but it takes a whole nother level of training to be ready to swim a 200 of these strokes. Because you, you're, you're going into such unknown territory, Bernie, especially because of the last eight or nine months. You just don't know. And it, it, the 200 can be a scary race. It's, it's not a sprint. It's not a middle distance somewhere in between. And it can really have some demons if you have to understand exactly what you're getting into. Well, 29 points is the margin at this point between the London Roar and the DC Trident. Gallant's trying to get a win, another win for the DC Trident down in lane number one, fighting it with the two London swimmers in the middle, Sydney Pickram and Annie Laser. Laser was five one hundredths of a second behind Gallant, and Laser has a great back half. She is so good on the back half of all her races. Not only the 200, but also the 100. Not real blazing speed, but boy, she is a great back half swimmer. With a 50 to go, Laser has taken the lead and leads by almost a half a second. Laser, Gallant, Pickram in that order. Yeah, 35-6 on that 50. Nobody else was under 36 seconds on that third 50. And this is why Laser is one of the best breaststrokers in the world today. She is hammering it home now this last 50. Jackpot time in this event, 5.4 seconds. She's got a chance to score a whole bunch of points for the London Roar, who already lead it by 29 points. Laser, what a pickup for the London Roar. She gets the win. That's the first time since last year in Dallas that she won this event. And man, look at this. It's gonna be a big time jackpot for Annie Laser, stealing away six more points. She scores 15 in the event and 21 total points going to the London Roar. Yeah, and think about this, dead even at the 100. Laser and Gallant. In fact, Gallant had the lead at the 100, but this is where Laser turned it on. The second 100, she was 2.18.8, almost two seconds ahead of Gallant. Her last 250s, 35.6, 35.5. Nobody else in the entire field split under 36 seconds for either 50, the 150 or the 200. Boy, what a payoff for her. Annie Laser extends the lead. London Roar as a team now with 81 points. Big time difference there. They tack on 14 more points for their advantage. And now, folks, it is time. The world record holder, Kira Pagoda, stepping onto the pool deck. Right next to him, his teammate, Adam Peaty. But this, folks, is a very good field that includes Ian Finnerty, down on lane number one for the DC Triton. Of course, you got Petey and Pragoda in three and four, and you can't count out the Aqua Centurions, because again, they're very good at pressure, but it seems like Martinegi and Scazzoli, they're better at the 50 and the 100. Yeah, that, they're gonna be much better as the distances start to go down. I think Pragoda, might be the class of this field. He's the only true 200 breaststroker in this whole group right here. Most of those guys are in that 150 range. Verasto maybe, Murdoch certainly is a great 200 breaststroker, but it's gonna be hard to beat Pagoda. And, I, and we'll talk about it more in the race, but I, I love Adam Petey stepping up and doing this, right? He didn't have to swim. We were talking about this earlier, Bernie, you and I. It, it, I mean, this is a, a chance for him to score points for his team. Certainly an event that is very rare for him. He rarely swims a 200 breaststroke. Mark Foster was talking to him earlier about it. And you know, he just wants to do as much as he can for the team. A year ago, Petey scored 73 and a half points.
And again, that's what makes ISL special, so special for these athletes. For a guy like Adam Petey, he never had an opportunity to swim in a high school or a collegiate dual meet swimming for a team. It's always been uh, about himself and swimming individually. And of course, you're going to step up and try to score points for your team. Well, we saw a little glimpse of what Katinka Hosu was doing in her first event. Now we get a chance to see the best breaststroker in the world, at least in the 50 and the 100 stage, and Adam Petey and where he falls in his training. Well, Pergoda, no ISL wins in this event, believe it or not, a year ago. Marco Koch set a new ISL record over the weekend in match number one going 202.1. And right now, it looks like we got about four swimmers that have a chance. Ian Finnerty, Tommy Koch at the bottom of the pool in one and two for DC Train. Pragoda leading halfway home only by eight one hundredths of a second over Finnerty. He's in the gold cap in the middle of the pool, swimming for the London Roar. And you can't count out the Aqua Centurions in this race either. Pragoda out in 59 4. If you're looking at Petey, he was sixth at the 100 mark at 004. He's three from your left. That's Adam Petey in lane number three. Pagoda's starting to really kind of move out a little bit. Still tight, two tenths of a second over Cope. Final 50, here we go. Cope trying to track down the world record holder in lane number four. Pragoda turning first, Cope just behind him. It's gonna come down to this final 25, folks. But Pragoda taking a whole nother level, and here comes Petey! Petey moving up, Petey's gonna battle it out, and what guts, Petey's gonna touch second. One, two, the finish for the London Roar. Oh, wow! Unbelievable for Adam Petey. I, you know, again, I'd love to ask him, you know, because of the fact that you don't swim a 200, maybe you took it out too easy because you just didn't want to burn your wheels, spin your wheels too much that first 100 because he came home. I mean, Pergoda was really steady all the way through, 59-4, and then he was 105-2. But Petey, 004, and then he was 105-1 coming home. So he came home fast, very fast, faster than anybody else in the field. And you see them both turning right there. You can kind of get a feel, though, Bernie, right, that Petey was starting to pick it up after that third one, at the third 50, after the 150 mark. See him three from the left? Go by and going by, another 25, he might have caught Pragoda. Well, Petey is one of 11 swimmers who return to the London Roar from the 2019 season. And this is gonna be one of their events, folk. Men's breaststroke, 200, 150. You're gonna see a lot of Adam Petey. He finishes second, but look at the lead early on now for the London Roar. Mark's out of the pool deck with Adam Petey. But a lot of people looking to see if the London War can try to keep pace with Energy Standard. Of course, they were defeated for the first time ever in the history of their franchise in match number one by the Cali Condors. But Adam Petey, he could be one of the ultimate difference makers for that team, particularly with what he can provide in the 400 medley relay. This is our first relay of the day. It's the women's four by 100 freestyle relay and Rowdy, Relays are big because it's double points, 19 points at least going to the relay winner. Yeah, th it is. That's why these relays, especially the medley relay, but even the 400 free relay, because of those, those double points, Bernie, uh, again, it, it, they, they are critical. And you can see Hosu right there getting ready to swim a relay that she hasn't swum much.
Actually, Hosu is not in this. I thought that was Hosu, but Chromo Vajoyo from the Iron is leading off for the Iron is Olympic gold medalist from way back in 2012. Renomi Chromo Vajoyo. But she was big last year, particularly in the skins. Again, the Iron's going to need to win that medal relay if they want to pick freestyle and give Chromo Vajoyo an opportunity to swim freestyle because that's one of the biggest differences of ISL 2020. Some of these that's a good new rules point. coming in. Yeah, yeah, you're, that's a great point. You know they're going to choose that 50 free because of her. 24.89, by the way, going out for Renomi Chromo Vajoyo. Right now, 52 points is the margin. You can see at the bottom of the screen for the London Roar over the DC Triton, but the battle, it's tight. There to try to get second place in Team Iron. That's a good start. Almost a half a second ahead of the rest of the field, but now we'll see if the London Roar can try to wheel in this Team Iron relay. Waddle had a great lead off as well though, Bernie. 52-4 for the fly champion, and 52 flat for Chromo Vajoyo. That was a great spot for her. And way ahead at this point are those two teams, Iron and Roar. Siobhan Marie O'Connor has the London Roar now ahead by three-tenths of a second, and she is digging to try to add to the lead. Max swimming on the left side of the screen in the red cap for the DC Triton. One of the best IMers in the world, Olympic silver medalist, and the freestyle leg for her is so good in the IM. We'll see her in the 200 IM a little bit later on. Halfway home, London, followed by DC. That's where our team standings are at this point. The difference still a half a second. 53-1 for O'Connor there. How about DC trying its Mac 52-3 for her. She brought them right into the mix of things, way to the left-hand side of your screen. Great split for her. Iron went back to 54-5 for Beckman, so they came real back. They went far back now, and it looks like Iron is really extending that lead. All right, Anna Hopkin is gonna swim the anchor leg for the London Roar. Amy Bilquist, who we already saw get a win earlier in the 200 back, Diving in at the bottom of the pool in lane number one for the DC Triton, but she's got two full seconds almost to make up. This one is all about the London Roar folks. They were so good at relays a season ago. It's one of the big reasons why they were the runner up in the entire league last year. 52 1 for Kamenova and Hopkin. Looking really solid at 24-5, going out on her feet on her anchor leg, and she is all by herself. And again, jackpot time rule does come into effect here on these relays, so everyone wants to certainly be within that margin because you don't want your, your time, your points stolen away. We know this, London Roar, they are going to get the win in the 4x100, at least 18 points. Second place to the DC Trion, Iron third, and the Aqua Centurions fourth. And look at those points stolen away. Mel Marshall's got to be really happy with that result. 24 points to the winning relay team. The, the good news there for London is, is the fact that the points that were down at the bottom were at least stolen away to themselves. <laughs> DC Trident, great job in getting second. Bilquis was 53-1 at the end. But again, if you think about what they did and the way they put this relay together, 52 flat. 54-5 for Beckman. 53-1, by the way, for Hopkin at the end, right there. What a great finish. 53-1 as well. 
Big time start for London Roar. They've got to be happy with the way they started. Of the seven races swum, London has won five, and they lead by 61 points early on on day number one. Well, back in Budapest, alongside three-time Olympic champion, five-time Olympian Mark Foster, Rowdy Gaines, Bernie Gunther, glad you are with us. Another event on the pool deck, Rowdy, where we very well may have a first-time champion here in this men's 50 free. Normally, it's Manadu, Dressel, yeah. Warazov. <laughs> the usual suspects. <laughs> What do you make of this field? Uh, you know, it is a wide open field. You've got a former world record holder in lane number three for London. Who else? Laveau. He's going to be tough to beat. He retired back in 2013 at 28. Came back in late 2018. He's decided to come back. Rookie season for him. Maxim Lovanovsky is going to be in lane number five. As far as the best times going into the field, those are the only two swimmers that we mm -hmm. have seen go under 21 seconds. Right. Not that they're going to be in that type of form right here. Right. I mean, it, it, again, it, it's all on paper, and that's all we have to go with. And, in fact, probably most of the coaches, that's all they have to go with. And that guy right there at 34 years of age, can he still get it done? He's the world record holder, by the way, still in the 100 freestyle. And this is his best race right now, especially at the age of 34. Laveau, seven-time European short course champion, trying to make it six wins for the London Roar. But so far, Lebanowski out to a good start. And how about Team Iron? They've got their first win. Boy, they needed that. Oh. How desperately did they need that? Really solid swim. The only guy, Lobanowski was the only guy that broke 21 there. 20.92. First time champion, and you see it right there. The 50. All of them really virtually dead, even on that start. Right in the middle. Dark cap. Good turn. You have to get up underneath that huge wave these big old guys bring into the wall. Then get up and go. No breathing at all going down that last 25. And then, boom, he gets in at 20.9, wins it. And Zabo, another big second place for Aqua Centurions, getting it in at 21 flat. And Zach Apple, how about him going 21-1 to get third? Laveau, eighth. But helps out Team Iron. They have moved even now with the DC Trident. They're within four points of the Aqua Centurions. As we move on to the Women's 50 Freestyle, which features the ISL record holder and the world record holder. And Renomi Krovijojo. And you've seen what she did in the relay earlier, getting them off to such a great start. She's ISL third rated swimmer in this event and uh, we love to see her go up against Sarah Choistrom who was on fire in match number one but you'd think that she may have a chance for a jackpot here. Well you know it's funny when you say third rated swimmer in this event. Crazy it's, right? I mean, it's crazy thinking about it. I mean she's the world record holder one of the great sprinters of all time and she's rated third in the ISL. That's how good the field is across the board in this International Swim League. Olympic champion in the 50 and the 100 freestyle in London 2012. There's only two ISL top 10 swimmers in this event, Madison Kennedy, the other one down in lane number one for the DC Trident. The only thing that Madison, I shouldn't say the only thing, she's a great 50 freestyler, really solid, but the only thing going for her right now, based on the way Chroma Vajojo swam that relay, is the fact that the relay was just a few minutes ago. So how much does she have left in the tank after that first 100 of the season? Well, you saw her overall ISL rating. She is rated as the number 11 swimmer overall, and she gets out to a great start. She's going to be the first to turn, trying to get another win for Team Iron. Can they go back to back? How big can this be? Jackpot time, 0 0.95 seconds. Renomi Kovavijoya 
Rubio, and she touches first, 23-64, stealing the points from a couple more swimmers here in the field. Let's see how big this jackpot is. It's 1-2 for the iron, 15 points for the winner, 7 points for second, 22 points in all. And they are climbing right back up the standings. They started off really slow, but boy, they are building some momentum. Remember, this is a combination women and men. There is no women's side or men's side in Chroma Vigilio. You saw that great start right there. They all go into the turn pretty much even across the board. You could see it from underwater, but look, three from your right, Chroma Vigilio, what? an amazing legend she is in this sport still getting it done 23 6 4 making it look easy the only swimmer under 24 seconds that's a great time to start the season well we thought Katika Hosu would win the first event for Team Iron but they finally got it going here at home back-to-back -back wins and look at this Team Iron moving up to second closing in on the roar and they still have Katika Hosu to come in the 200 IM. Well, there she is backstage, the Iron Lady, Katinka Hosu, Olympic champion in the 200 IM. She will go in a moment, but next on the pool deck, we have the men's 200 IM back-to-back -back wins by the Team Iron. They've closed the gap of the London Roar, trailing by only now 39 points. Can they win their third consecutive race, get a little momentum? Because they have to feel pretty good about Katinka's chances in the 200 IM. Boy, they've got a tall order here, Vazayos. It's gonna be very good. Fourth fastest performer in history for London. Great fly and back, weak breaststroke, but he is so good in the other three strokes. Yeah, Vizayos, third rated swimmer in this event. European short course champion in the 200 fly and in the 200 IM. Won this event twice last year for the DC try and he's another big pickup for the London Roar. You see he scored 73 points a year ago. 26 years of age. Great butterflyer. That's his best stroke. Mazias rated third. Heinz rated fifth. And Duncan Scott rated seventh. All in the top ten in this event, battling it out. Duncan Scott, great freestyler. If he's even close to the field with 50 meters left, you're going to give him a chance, no question about it. Abram Devine down there in lane number two, swimming for DC Trident. He finaled at the World Championships in 2019. He's got an all around great. Well, we talk always in team sport about momentum, and look at this, Leonardo Santos maybe sensing a little momentum as Team Iron, they won back-to-back -back events, trying to keep it going. He was the bronze medal winning swimmer at the Pan American Games in 2019 in the 200 IM, and he is going to be the leader halfway through as they turn from backstroke to breaststroke. He's going to be very good tomorrow when we get to the 100 IM. He's even better in the shorter distance. His best time is only 153.3, but he's also got a great freestyle as well. So you want to give him a great shot after this breaststroke leg. Bazayos trying to track him down on the inside and the gold cap on the outside. It's Philip Heinz, but it looks like Santos is going to carry the lead into the know. final Heinz 50. Go by him. No, it is Heinz. You're right by six one hundredths of a second. Heinz, Santos, Vazayos battling it out for the 200 IM win. And that's where Heinz kind of played this field right to his 
expectations. He doesn't have a weak stroke, none. He's not real strong in one or the other, but he doesn't have that weak stroke, and it is paying off for him here. Philip Heinz, who was second in the European Derby, is the champion of match two of 2020 ISL. Big win for the Aqua Centurion, snatching it away there in the final 100. All smiles, Aqua Centurions, Philip Heinz, but now it's time to welcome onto the pool deck the women's 200 IM, who includes the world record holder. In this event, the Iron Lady, we will see how she does for her second appearance on the pool deck swimming an individual event. This, this just may be, Bernie, the best field we've seen here yet at the ISL. It, it is incredible. As you said, three Olympic finalists, four of the top ten swimmers in history are in this event, including the Iron Lady, who has better than anybody. Bethany Galat, lane number one, rated as the number nine swimmer. Anderson in lane two, sixth rated swimmer in this event. O'Connor for the London Roar in three, the eighth rated swimmer. Pickram, the third rated swimmer, and the second best swimmer as far as the ISL ratings, Katinka Hosu. Well, you've got Hosu, Pickram, Verasso, who used to be the world record holder. She set that back way back in 2009. And of course, O'Connor, the silver medalist. Those are the four swimmers that you want to watch. Now, what does Hosu do? Does, do. <laughs> My goodness, what can she do here? Olympic champion in lane number five. Olympic silver medalist in lane number three. In a packed field with five of the top ten swimmers in the ISL ratings in this event. She has won four straight world championships. That's how good Katinka Hosu is. 19, 17, 15, and 13. You throw the 400 IM back in 2009, she is a repeat champion like no other in the individual medley. A lot can change, 50 of each stroke, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle. It's Tane Bruce in lane number eight, out to the early lead, but look at how tight this field is, Rowdy. Oh all the way across the board. I love that shot from overhead because it really gives the vantage point of where everybody is and who has that great chance here going into the breaststroke. Looks like Pickram, O'Connor, Hosu, all there in the middle. Katinka Hosu, she is going to turn first, followed by O'Connor and Pickram. Only three tenths of a second separating first from third. Pickram has the best breaststroke of this field. O'Connor probably has the best freestyle. Of course, it all depends on Hosu and where she's at. And on the left side of the screen, Bailey Anderson in the red cap. She's moved into contention. She's going to have a chance. And here we go. Pickram, Hosu, those two battling it out right there in the middle now. And Shabon O'Connor, don't give up on her right there in lane number three. She has a great freestyle. Still three tenths of a second. Now it favors Pickram. Here we go with the final 50. Katinka Hosu trying to dig deep at home, trying to get another win for Team Iron. Can Pickram hold her off the final 25? Boy, Pickham is doing the job right here in freestyle. But here comes the Iron Lady. Pickham trying to hold her off. Bailey Anderson trying to hold her off. And London gets the win. Anderson gets second. And Hosu falls to third on the final 25. What a race. What a race. Four tenths of a second separated those top three swimmers. That is a heck of a race for Sydney Pickram. What a way to be able to hold on to the freestyle at the end. 24 one hundredths of a second over Anderson. And think about her. She was not even in the, in the picture to start. She go, almost goes her best time to grab second, to steal second away from Hosu. And the Olympic champion and the Olympic silver medalist, 
third and fourth. Again, that's how good this field was, is, and is going to be. And folks, this just tells you how good ISL 2020 is going to be. The world record holder, the defending Olympic champion, she falls to third, but still for Team Iron, able to score nine points, but it is still the London Roar in the lead, trying to get their first win of ISL 2020. And now, folks, it is time to bring back onto the pool deck Adam Peaty. You can see on the start list, he is rated as the 33rd best swimmer in all the ISL as far as the points he can bring to the table. And this is another packed field here. Four, five, and six in the ISL. Again, Adam Petey kind of known a little more for his 50 breaststroke long, long course. course. Right, I mean, he, he has a top eight times in history in the long course version. Bernie, the only swimmer in history to ever break 26, yet he's only the eighth fastest performer in history in the short course meter version. So he, that basically what that tells you, he doesn't swim short course meters much. Yeah, and in fact, Fabio Scazzoli coming on in lane number seven, Martinegi coming on in lane number eight. Those two were very good. And in fact, we had a little bit of an upset as Scazzoli took down Adam Petey at home. Can he do it again here, 32 years old? going up against the Olympic champion in the 100 breaststroke in lane number four. Petey, lane four, gold cap. Again, remember Petey, he surged home to get second in the 200 breaststroke. Let's see his opening speed here. It looked like Saki maybe had the best start in lane number six. He turns first at the 25. Everybody's trying to track him down for Team Iron. Wow. Saki, are you kidding me? Look at him go. He's going to win this. Saki gets the win. Another win for Team Iron. And Adam Petey falls to second. 25-74, that becomes the, he becomes the ninth fastest swimmer in history with the very first race of the season. Unbelievable start there for Saki, and Iron continues to just press on. Adam Petey finished second, 26-06, pretty good start for him. Remember, he came off that 200 breaststroke earlier in the meet, and Scazzoli, who was the fourth fastest performer in history. He ends up getting third, but what a start for Saki. And again, iron. Saki only 22 years old from Turkey, second at the European Championships in the 50 breaststroke. And Team Iron closing the gap with the London Roar as they have really started to find their groove in the last couple of events, getting some wins. It's women's 50 breaststroke time. Andy Laser, the world record holder, Alia Atkinson, second ISL rated swimmer in this event, is going to go in the middle, trying to get a, a win for the London Roar. Remember, they won five of the first seven events, but a little bit quieter here in the second session. Alia Atkinson won this event three times last year during the league. Lily King winning all the rest of them. Atkinson, as you said, world record holder, 28.56. Lily King, by the way, went 28.86 the first day of ISL. That was an American record. In fact, Pilato, King, and Hannes now have the fourth, fifth, and sixth fastest times in history, all from a couple days ago. Yeah, and folks, they were worried about how fast these swimmers would swim. Some have had no problem. All right, the world record holder in the middle of the pool in lane number four, and Atkinson, and man, Rowdy, can she start. Boy, she does. She has, she might have the fastest first 15 meters of anybody in the world, including Lily King. 
What King does so well was when she comes off that 25 wall, but Atkinson right now, proven why she's the world record holder. Atkinson trying to close home, trying to get another win for the London Roar, and she's going to do it. 29.2. Making it look easy, 29.2, just really in cruise control. Kind of a shake of a head saying, ah, that'll do, that'll do. Still behind three swimmers in the last competition, but remember, she really didn't have any competition. Hoko was 29.4, pretty good. Carraro, 29.5. But you can see from above, Alia Atkinson, the world record holder. About seven-tenths of a second off her world record, but a good start, nice full extension into the wall to finish first. Seventh time London has won, but again, you see the team picture. The Iron actually outscored the London Roar on that event by two points. But the London Roar still in the lead. 43 points the difference for the London Roar, trying to get their first win of ISL 2020. Alia Atkinson getting a big win. Burning up their back in Budapest alongside three-time Olympic champion Rowdy Gaines men's 4x100 freestyle. If you're new to the ISL, they are coming on looking for double points for their team. At the moment, the London Roar in the lead. Team Iron starting to get into their groove. They're starting to get some wins, and if they could get a win here, they could really start to narrow that deficit, particularly with what we saw with the jackpot time standard. That can really cut into the lead. Yeah, especially when it counts as double points. So that jackpot, very important, and very important to win this relay, and we've got even a bigger relay heading up in just a few minutes with that medley relay. And again, it's always a strategy, Roddy. Yeah. Uh, you have 12 men, 12 women on your team. That's it. And you need them to fill the individual events. You need them to fill the relays. Right. And you have to have that strategy. Do you want to win the relay? Can you split the relays? How deep is your team? That's the question. And that, that's the question. I mean, really, Bernie, it, it depends on the depth and whether or not you can split those up to score higher but not necessarily winning. I would definitely put my four best on there, especially if I knew I had a chance to win because the jackpot times would just fall right into my relay if I beat my own relay. So really, you really want to stack it with your four best swimmers. That would be my strategy. And this one's hard to pick, Bernie. I, I mean, I've been going over it all day long. And again, there are so many fresh faces here that you just don't know a lot about. So you're going to see a lot in this relay, just like you did in the women's relay. It will tell you a lot. But there's no real superstar in these relays right here for men. You had the superstar in Chroma Vigioio for the women, but none here. And that's why it pretty much levels playing field. You don't have a click Caleb Dressel that can bring it home. Or a Maxime Rooney who did so much that you knew he was going to have a good one. Maybe a slight advantage for Cherokee starting out well in the top of the pool. Aqua Centurions looking well at the beginning. Zabo swimming the opening leg in lane number eight and he has his team out in the lead in lane number eight. 46-8 for Zabo and Centurions and Heinz will go in there. He's a great swimmer as well in freestyle. We saw him, what he was able to do in the IM. 46-8 for Zabo. Nobody else was under 47. You can see the difference right now. Aqua Centurions would love to try to cut into the lead of Team Iron again. You get four points for your team win all the way down to only one point for finishing in fourth place. Only eight teams are going to move on to the semifinals, and it's going to be in the middle of November. And the ISL championship this year is going to be November 21st and 22nd. All this swimming, all this great action happening over the course of only five weeks, Roddy. 
A uh, great split there for Chirgini for Centurions. He was 46-2 on that and brought them from fourth to first place in that split alone. Fastest split so far of any team. Bruno Carrera now in the pool in lane number seven. Aqua Centurions still in the lead over Team Iron, but only by two-tenths. 22-1 going out for Carrera. Santos 22 flat. Boy, this is tight all the way. The Iron have been second the entire way. They have not moved from second place. DeBar was 21-8 on his split. Look at this, the Aqua Centurions currently third. Will they get the win? And they desperately need it. They are in third place, way behind at this point. By the way, 46-5 for Carrera. And they are in first place. Again, the Iron stays in second. Lebanowski in lane number five for the Iron, trying to track down the Aqua Centurions. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. They are running away with this. Wow. Fourth at the 100 mark. And nothing close after that. Aqua Centurions get the win! DC Triton second and Team Iron third. And look at this, the London Roar. They fall to fourth. Big time performance there for the Aqua Centurions. Oh, wow. Trying to close the gap. But with only three events remaining, let's check out our MVP again. $20,000 spread among the top three swimmers. And right now it's Marie Waddle in the lead with 21 points using the jackpot time to her advantage in her London Roar. They are in the lead as well with 188 points, but Team Iron trying to close in with three more events still to go here on day one of match two of ISL 2020. All right, here's where we sit. Women's 50 backstroke, men's 50 back, 400 freestyle men and women, and then the all-important 400 mentally relay. That's going to conclude things here on day one of match two. Amy Bilquist coming back in the pool deck, and if she's as good as she was earlier, could be another win for the DC Triton. I, I like her here. I really do. She's better in the 50 and the 100. I think she's got a great shot at another victory. London Roar right now leading. 188 points to so the Irons, 151. Trissant is a huge pickup for them. She was with Iron a season ago, and as far as the ISL ratings are concerned, she's the only swimmer in this field on the top 10. Don't forget the world record holder, Eddie N. Medeiros, back-to-back -back world record holders with Atkinson, and now Medeiros, 25-67, Smaliga, Almost broke it for Cali Condors yesterday. 25.74, only seven one hundredths of a second off that world record. She did break the American record, but you've got the first and fourth fastest swimmers in history in this event with Tucson and Medeiros. And you want to call her a dark horse, go ahead. But Amy Bilquis right there in front of you in lane one could be a co-favorite. 26.64, her best time. Madero set the world record back in 2014. Mm -hmm. All about the start and turn here in the 50 backstroke. Mac got out to a good start. Yeah, really tight there in the middle of the pool right now. Bilquis way down at the bottom has a lot of catching up to do. It is Mack, the last one to pop up, trying to hold off the London Roar. Can she do it? She does! Wow. Mack with another win for the DC Trident. What an upset! What an upset! The fastest time she's ever been in her life was 26-6. She just went her lifetime best. 
And everybody was talking about Tucson and Medeiros and Bilquist. Unbelievable right there for DC Trident. It was actually Bilquist's teammate that did it. Right there in lane number two and took it out very quick. You see Bilquist right in front of you, but right to her side, to the right of the screen, going over to her side was Mac. There she is, second from the right, red cap. Watch her come in and punch that wall. In perfect extension of the wall, and that's a great victory for DC Trident. Big time performance, DC Trident trying to chase down the Aqua Centurions. Remember, only eight teams move on to the semifinal. Even if they can finish second, they get one more point to that total, but Still London in the lead, the first to get over the 200 mark. They now have 201 points as we welcome onto the pool deck the ISL record holder, the winner of last year's ISL Grand Final in Las Vegas, Guilherme Guido, the number one ISL rated swimmer in this event. He won this event four times. He was, needless to say, unbeatable. He really was second fastest swimmer in history, 22.5. Flo Manadou, who is also here in the ISL, is the world record holder, but Guido went that 22.5 last year at the Budapest stop. So he loves this pool. He went his lifetime best right here in Budapest. Diener in three, Guido in four. Those are the only two swimmers rated in the top 10 in the ISL. This could be a big race for the London Roar. Yeah, and, and this could do it for them. That, uh, there's no catching them today if they win this one. We got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. This, we're only halfway through, going into the halfway point, but this would be huge for Guido. 86 points scored by Guido last year. Second fastest all time, four times the champion in this event. Can he win it for the fifth time and get another victory for the London Roar? Boy, he is so quick off the block. 0.56. Nikolaev down in lane two was 0.55, but boy, he is quick off the block. Look a little like Ryan Murphy coming off that block there. Guido's thinking jackpot. Diener swimming with him, and it might be Christian Diener upsetting the defending champion. Oh, Diener, he gets Guido. His first defeat ever in ISL history. A new champ, and believe it or not, right now London very happy with that. And look at the two teammates, one, two. And Diener shaking his head saying, what did I just do? I just de defeated the defending champion. I went the best time I've ever gone in my life. I'm now the ninth fastest swimmer in history. You look at the bearded one, that's Guido, but look at the underwater that Diener had. Beautiful underwater, and that's what did it for him. The underwater being that fifth stroke, perfect finish at the end, 14 one hundredths of a second ahead of his teammate. Diener and Guido, the only two that get under 23 seconds. 26 big points for the London Roar. And how about this? London, day one. They've got eight wins now. All right, we got two more individual races before the all-important 400 medley relay first. Women's 400 meter freestyle, and again, we have to mention it. Right now, the Aqua Centurions are without Federica Pellegrini battling COVID-19 back in Italy. They are hopeful that she will get better. Obviously, all of us are hopeful that she will get better, healthy, sure. and right back on the pool deck the next time the Aqua Centurions are out battling. And uh, obviously, that's a big miss for the Aqua Centurions not having Pellegrini, but right now they find themselves second, only two points ahead of the DC Trident. Yeah, but a lot of teams are in this position where they're missing a lot of key personnel respectively. So everybody's in the same boat as far as missing those uh, those great swimmers. But there are pl there is plenty 
of talent. And there's plenty of talent in this pool, and there will be a first-time champion again. We've seen a lot of them tonight. Andrushenko might be the favorite, right, Bernie? Yeah, Veronica Andrushenko, fifth-rated ISL swimmer in this event. She was uh, maybe changing from a sprinter to maybe more of a middle distance freestyler because she was the European short course champion in the 100 freestyle in 2012. And then four years later, she gets silver in this event in the 400 free. And by the way, if you are new to the International Swimming League, this is probably one of the biggest differences is the 400 free, 400 IM, those are the longest races you'll see, Rowdy. Yeah, that, that's... Uh that makes this meet so exciting, moves it along. I love the 1500 and the 800, trust me, I love it. But for these kind of swimmers, it's all about, well, you said it at the very top of the first broadcast, it's all about speed, baby, and that's what these swimmers are. And the 400 is, is very similar to the, the, to the mile in track and field, so it, it's definitely more of a middle distance type race, but there is a lot of talent here. And Andrushenko, she's been 358-2. She did that back in 2019. She was second here in Budapest last year at the ISL. There were five different champions in the ISL in the 400 freestyle last year. Well, it's been a big first day for the Aqua Centurions. Mark Foster is down with their head coach, Mateo Junta. When they were mentioning, if you're just joining us and you didn't get a chance to see match number one, up next, it's the women's 4x100 medley relay. If you're new to ISL, the match is always finished with a skins race. And a year ago, that skins race was always freestyle. But now, the winning team of the medley relay at the end of day number one gets two hours to decide what the stroke would be. And we saw that be a big, big key for the Cali Condors as Lily King scored 50 points in the skins, being the skins winner. And even Ryan Murphy, he was snatching points away in all the rounds. Getting back to this race for just a second, I mean, they are, there are seven rookies in this event. Andrushenko is the only swimmer that swam in the ISL last year. That's why there's a lot of unknown. And talk about an unknown. How about Dumont up there in lane number eight for Aqua Centurions, Bernie? What a job she's doing right now. Yeah, Andrushenko in this field, the only swimmer that on paper right. has gotten under four minutes. But it's Dumont in the lead with now uh, turning and she's got just 50 meters to go and she's built almost a full second lead trying to get another win for the Aqua Centurions. And, and she's been so steady, 30.3, 30.2, 29.5, just her last three 50s. Andrushenko's hanging in there. She was 30 flat that last 50, but this is all about Dumont. Dumont trying to extend the lead between the Aqua Centurions at DC, trying in third place. She gets the win. Oh, almost gets under four minutes. That's a lifetime best for Dumont. What a time. What, what, what a great job for Dumont. 2 get these splits, 2 one one She went out the first 200. She came back in 2 What does that mean? She's negative split 
that race. She came back faster her second 200 than her first 200. That was a heck of a swim for Dumont. Dumont on the right, getting another win for the Aqua Centurions. That would have 18 been 18 points for their team. Yeah, that would have been a top three finish in the first group of four teams we saw in the ISL. A heck of a swim. Well, they're trying to make sure that they are at least third. And they add to their margin now. They have 150 points, but it's still the London Roar leading by 62 points. Final individual event of match two, day number one. Men's 400 freestyle now on the pool deck. And they may have a chance to win this one as well. The Romantic just getting added to this team. He was with Energy Standard a year ago. He was a runner up in Indianapolis and in Naples. Short course champion of the 1500. At the World Championships, silver in the 1500, but there he is, rated 282, but he's got a good chance of getting at least nine points here. Gosh, going back to Dumont again, I, I said I, I was wrong on this, but she was 201-159-2 for a 4003 on her time. That's, that's the kind of swim you want to have to give you that kind of confidence. And who knows with this men's 400, you could see the same thing happen here. Somebody that we don't know a lot about. Dumont goes her best time by four seconds. Could we see it here with these two right here? Grothy. Yeah, well, likely a battle on the outside. Romantics are going to be at the top of the screen. White cap, lane number seven. Zane Grothy at the bottom, lane number two. He's the ISL's number one rated swimmer in this event. Those two battled in Indianapolis and in Naples, and every time Zane Grothy was the winner, but man, did they battle. One second the difference in Indianapolis, three tenths of a second the difference in Naples. And the question is, what type of form are they in? That's exactly right. You never know in the 400. Grothy, probably a little better in the 200. Romanchuk is better in the 1500. And right Ron now it's Vinny Lanzin, the middle of the pool, <laughs> trying to chase down, excuse me, Leonardo Santos is the leader, 51-1. And, and this is a, a bit of a strange field because you've got Santos, who's primarily an IMer. Pan Am bronze medalist in the 400 IM. Actually, check that silver medalist in the 400 IM. He won the bronze in the 200 IM. But he did swim on the world championship relay for Brazil. And he is just flying right now. But a lot can happen in a 400, right, Rowdy? But he's oh, yeah. still already out to a one-second lead. The question is... What does he have still left in the tank? Well, he's coming back a little bit, and, and but you know he is a 400 IMer, so certainly I don't expect him to die off too much. But boy, he has really come back. Wow, he fell apart in a hurry. Like, and this is what being off for eight months look. I mean, look at his stroke. You can tell he is in a lot of pain at the halfway point. A lot of pain. Romantic has taken the lead at the bottom. There he is in the red cap. Zane Grothy, we expected it to be these two. Santos got in the mix early on in the Aqua Centurions. They've got a chance for some big points. You could see the team picture at the bottom. DC trying currently fourth, trying to move up. Aqua Centurions trying to make sure they can be at least third. They're only 20 points behind Team Iron. Romanchuk looking really good at 148.6 and looking to both sides so he can see his teammate Mello right next to him. And then because he's so far ahead of the middle of the pool, 
He can see Grothy way down to the left-hand side of your screen in that red cap in lane number two. Kind of fight for second right now with Mello. One second, the difference. Romanchuk, a year ago, he continued to finish second to Zane Grothy, who won this event three times. Is he saying it's my time here in ISL 2020? Grothy starting to catch him a little bit. He was 27-9 on that split. Romanchuk was 28-1. 50 meters left to go. That split right there, Grothy 27-5. Romanchuk, Romanchuk was 28-1. Here comes Grothy. Here they come, turning even down to 25 meters to decide it, and Grothy he is going to try to take this and snatch it away from Armanchuk in the final 25, and he, he does it. it! He gets the win for DC Trident. Wow, what a comeback for Zane Grothy. Unbelievable, he did just like Dumani. Came back pretty much dead even after the first 100. He's 149.4, the first 100. 150.3, the second 200. I say first 100, first 200. Wow, great job. Just a great job for Zane Grothy. And you can see why he was the top rated 400 swimmer in the ISL last year. At one point, the American record holder in the 500 yard freestyle. Boy, what a what a job, and, and what a job Romanchuk did. I mean, remember, he's 340.1. He's only three tenths of a second behind Zane Grothy, and you can see Grothy breathing to his right. So he's got Romanchuk right in his eyes, and look at that, very close at the end. What a great swim for well, Grothy, and, and something that at that DC tried it desperately needed. Yeah, and look at how tight the team battle is, Grothy. Gets DC trying. Not only are they within range of the Aqua Centurions, but the difference between second and fourth right now is 23 points with the relays still to come. Not only double points in the medley relay, but to the winner, they pick the skins. Who will it be? We'll find out when we come back. All right, well, we have seen a lot of racing here on day one of match two, but this very well could be the deciding moment for all the teams. Who will win the 4x100 medley relay? Not only are double points on the line, but the winner is the one that gets to pick the skins race. On the women's side, of course, yesterday, Cali Condors won the relay. They picked breaststroke. Lily King went on to dominate. On the men's side, LA Current won. They picked backstroke. They won the skins as well. And all the points. <laughs> I mean, it was that bad in the men's 50 backstroke. That's why this relay is the single most important race of the entire competition. No question about it. This is a big one. Relays are always fun. They show so much about depth for your team, obviously. But this, this relay is really critical. A lot of tension down on the deck right now. All right, and also in the team battle, 23 points separating second from fourth. Well, down there in lane one, you've got Bilqua. She won the 200 backstroke. And then right next to her, Lint Mack won the 50 backstroke. The problem is they kind of cancel each other out 
For the roar, though, Mark Foster was talking about it a little while ago. He liked them because of the middle of the pool. Atkinson winning the 50 breaststroke, and then Waddle winning the 100 butterfly. Their teammates right there in the middle of this race. Trust and fly. Out to the early lead, about a half second in front, and the roar first and third at the moment. They lead the competition well ahead by 60 points in front of the iron, as you can see at the bottom of the screen with 234 points. That's not, that's not a good sign for the rest of the group. This was a key leg for the roar because if you give Atkinson and Waddle any kind of life, it's gonna be hard to beat them. How much life do they have? Three tens, that's the lead for the roar over the DC Trident. 56-5 for Toussaint. That was a brilliant split for her. Bilquis was also solid at 56-9, but I'm not sure anybody matches London Roar now with Atkinson and Waddle. Except for maybe Laser, who was also London Roar right next to Atkinson. Atkinson looking good. Let's see what the lead is now over a second. 29.5, her first 50. 30.5, Kozelski, that's where the big difference was. She outsplit everybody else in the field by a full second, that first 50. So much speed for the world record holder in the 50. London trying to get another relay win here on day number one. And look at the lead opened up by Atkinson. You can already start thinking about what the stroke is. I was just getting ready to say, I, I, you, you got to believe that they're going to choose breaststroke with Atkinson. I mean, but boy, they're so strong in all the 50s. But boy, I tell you, this is this is a runaway right now. They've got to be feeling really good. Waddle won the 100 backstroke earlier in the meet. Fairly easily, by the way. Nobody's going to catch her. Now, Chromo Ajoyo is in lane number five, right above for iron. You know what she's capable of doing, no question. She had the fastest split of anybody else in the 400 free relay, but there's just too much of a hole, Bernie. There's just no way. But remember, the battle for team points, only 23 points separating second from fourth. And right now, Iron DC trying battling it out, but it's all about London. They're in the lead with 100 meters of freestyle to go. Three seconds plus is their lead. Atkinson, 103.8. Waddle, 56.8. Wow. Beckman was the only one close, and she was 56-8 as well. But the problem with Beckman, she was on the B relay for iron. Gear coming home, trying to hold off the rest of the field for a second. Nobody's gonna catch London. They're gonna pick the skins. They're not only going to pick the skins, but you've got to start thinking jackpot in a big way, and that jackpot double. Oh, wow, what a race. London Roar wins the medley relay. 350-27. DC Triton second, Team Iron third. Nice swim for DC Trident to get second there. They stayed in second the entire way, 52-8. You see Alia Atkinson, great reaction from her. 1038 on her split. Exchanges, absolutely critical here. I don't see any DQs up there on the board, so it seems official at this point. We haven't had any DQs here on the relays, any, any substantial DQs anyway. And look at the wedge, man. Holy smokes. Gear way over there to the left will grab second with a spectacular 52-8. And we do get a DQ. Actually, we do get a DQ iron. Yeah, they say it was an early takeoff for Team Iron in lane number five. But the London Roar, they get the win. What stroke are they going to pick, Mark?
<laughs> good one, Mark. I love I'd say it. that I consider to be a pretty good pick. Now can London do the same in the men's four by 100 medley? That's the question. That was great. Huh? What'd you say? <laughs> Guido Petey, starting off your relay. That's a pretty good start, right? Yeah. if you ask me. That's a pretty good one-two punch. Kush, Duncan Scott, that's a great relay. London Roar has a, a, just a, a tremendous amount of depth. That Their relays are just so strong, top to bottom. You, you'd stack their relays against any other of all the teams. We saw the Aqua Centurions win the men's 4x100 freestyle earlier. Revolta, Scazzoli, Heinz, Chiragini, that's their relay team out in lane number eight. Can they challenge the iron? DC Trident will be down at the bottom. Zach Apple split 45-1 on their 400 freestyle relay to get second. That's the fastest split thus far of any 100 freestyler we've had the first three days. So if they are close, they might have a shot. I just don't know how they're going to be close. There's just a lot of horsepower on some of these other relays. All right, the final battle of day one of match two. London in the lead by 82 points. What a tight battle. Centurions and DC Triton are currently tied for third, and they're only behind Team Iron by nine points. So this is going to decide who is second, third, and fourth going into day two for sure. And, and the crazy thing about the roar Bernie is really flip a coin with the first two legs for both the A and supposedly the B team. You've got Diener who won the 50, Pergoda the world record holder in the 200 going for the B and then Guido and Petey going for the A. Looks pretty good across the board. Team Iron, they touch first after the first 100. Only by one 100th. Yeah, 14 one hundredths of a second separated those top three themes. Bassetto doing a great job there at 50.24. All right, Petey in the water. Pragoda in the water. Ross Murdoch swimming for the iron, and look at London yeah. take advantage here on the breaststroke in a big way. Adam Petey, remember how close they were after the first 100? This is what I'm talking about with these relays. They are so good across the board with Pergoda and Petey. Pergoda was really close on his start, on his start, .07. That's a little tight, but still completely legal. Petey. He has built the lead, London in front, halfway through. Will they pick both skins races? 56-5 for Petey, 56-7 <laughs> for Pergoda. Saki was 56-8 down there for Irons relay. And that's the B relay. Kush in front, Duncan Scott to anchor. I don't think anybody can catch him, Rowdy. No. Well, the only team is the B relay. Their relay. <laughs> it seems like anyway at this point. Zabo trying to move up for the Aqua Centurions. Trying to move to second, third. Depending on how he can finish, he's in the white cap at the top of the screen in lane number seven. But it's going to be London in front with Duncan Scott diving into the pool. Now you've got to start thinking, what stroke are they going to choose tomorrow? What 50 are they going to be able to get out there to get that skins game going? Because they're going to win this relay. Duncan Scott was very tight, by the way, .00 on his start. McClay for London War was .02. Oh, boy, they were cutting it close and didn't really need to. 
Duncan Scott trying to lead a 1-2 finish for London, or can the Aqua Centurions jump on in? Aqua trying to close the gap, but it's going to be Duncan Scott. London will pick both skins races. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And how big is that for the Aqua Centurions? Rowdy, they moved into second place now. And that relay was a big reason for that. They went from seventh to third to second at the end. Look at the Aqua Centurions climbing up in front of the iron, and this is what we know. London second a year ago. They are in the lead after the end of day one of match two. For Mark Foster, Rowdy Gaines, and our entire ISL crew, I'm Bernie Guthrie. Can't wait to see you back here tomorrow to find out how match two concludes. Right now, it's London in the lead.